Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's the Market Sniper coming at you. Yes, we're going to be talking about oil today, uh, the dollar and general energies and a potential foreboding for some degree of events that may be setting up for the second half of the year, somewhere around the August, November uh, period, which also happens to coincide with uh, the US elections, which is likely to be highly divisive. So we've been looking at the WTI oil price and many people will notice that there's been a tightening in range. So that was a fall away low. There was some production cuts that came and we have to point out that Russia and uh, the Saudis have been pretty much cooperating quite well uh, given the events of March 2020 in terms of the glut that came in uh, energies markets, particularly oil, during that period. Uh, now we have a uh, much higher degree of what appears to be cooperation. Um, and we seem to have found a happy medium range of price for which oil is tightening within at the moment. That's somewhere north of 64 and south of 96. Uh, and getting ever tighter in the sort of eight, um, low 70s to 80s range. This is typical winding up structure for a potential subsequent move. And the funny thing about markets is they often give uh, a little bit of a tip of the head to some future event that could be a triggering event, either to the upside or the downside. At this moment, I'm not making a particular aggressive call. This video is early and is asking the question in a very open-ended, no answer kind of way. Uh, are we likely to face an impulsive move? That means a fast moving breakout that breaks a tightening range on the oil price at some point late in the second half of this year. And what more interestingly, because the charts often fall or a foreboding of potential future events that could be anywhere from war, uh, which would obviously push the price up, uh, demand destroying event, which could quite be disinflationary and push uh, the price down, um, or, or other economic events that could see a major move in the oil price. Um, so that's question number one, there's something coming. There's something coming of an impulse of nature, uh, and it could either be uh, a, a strong breakout to the upside, but it could also equally be uh, something disinflationary. I'm at this early, early-ish stage, I'm not putting a uh, an opinion of any great strength out on on direction. It's also important to understand uh, that we've had generally a commodity bull market up until recently. That's seen coffee go up all the beans, Arabica and Robusta, it's seen cocoa go up, um, it's seen copper go up. Uh, we've had a lot of things that have been marching and more recently, uh, and I'm no doubt that it will be framed as nationalism, populist, does alert to the extreme right. Uh, we've seen uh, political events uh, move the needle towards uh, Le Pen potentially doing better than Macron, um, a new party destroying the old conservative party uh, in the form of reform, um, which is very much an immigration uh, theme uh, to it, under Nigel Farage potentially grabbing an immense amount of seats as people are neither that enchanted with Labour and definitely disenchanted with uh, the existing uh, Tory party, which has uh, held power for quite an extended period. So this could indeed see uh, um, Farage's crowd do quite well. Uh, so there's that political uncertainty. And uh, there's also an element of uh, people talking about a trust moment for the French debt markets. Now, every major market has already had, and this is our, takes us to our favorite topic, the debt markets are wrecked. Um, that saw both Britain have its pension stroke currency crisis uh, during the period that the Bank of England failed to move the needle at the same rate as the US, and at the same time, Kwasi Kwarteng and Truss uh, did a stimulus budget that meant they would be dipping deeper into debt. That was enough to see uh, a no-bid virtual 
virtually, not uh, a paraphrasing rather than being an accurate statement, pensions unable to sell at mark-to-market prices that are typically expected uh, to make uh, pension payments. We've also had similar occur uh, although slightly better controlled in the states where uh, the California teachers pensions, which I keep mentioning these. And this is the reason why I keep mentioning this is because debt is the thing. There's too much of it and nobody really wants to buy more of it. Um, and we've also seen uh, now the French being warned about a potential truss moment uh, on the basis that they too are printing too much debt doing too much expenditure, not living uh, within their means in terms of income. And they have some of the most regressive tax policies uh, of a socialist going on communist nation uh, that you could probably have. Uh, anyway, with that all in mind, we have a debt based crisis, which could see interest rates uh, super spike as well. So I want you to keep that in your mind at the same time as we're discussing, discussing this critical energy market which is a very important inflation monitor. Now, we've also said that data has a habit of trending. And we had the everything is awesome trend when once we got uh, the real recession that suddenly the definition no longer applied uh, for. Uh, and we got no, 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 look how awesome the stats are, employment, etc. all of that going so great, big fat uh, guns, awesome, everything is awesome. And then Two months ago, we started to get something that more represents my best understanding of the large, deep recession that the United States and the rest of Europe are currently in after what was an exceedingly steep interest rate tightening cycle. Um, and I'll be showing you a couple of things of interest in and around that as part of a macroeconomic question. We're having a discussion on where are the economies and what's the next big thing to move. Interestingly, whilst we look at the CFDs, I'm going to take you to the dollar index as well. And we're going to highlight that uh, it's very important to understand what the dollar might be doing when you're talking about the oil prices. Uh, and if we have a little look at that, um, we've regularly said that it is our opinion that we have what's called the HVF <laughs> naming standards, watermelon smile uh, that is a rounding, uh, basing out uh, period for the dollar that is actually part of the dollar firming up. So on this bigger time frame, we have spoken of the dollar firming up. This was a rejection that was a blow off event and that this has been very violently corrective in that candle and that since then we traded below the 100 for a smidge, not much more. The rejection of that has since led to broadly affirming dollar environment. So since July of 2023, our bias has been expect dollar generally to be up. There was quite a lengthy weakening phase that occurred there. Uh, but that you are basing out, basing out. We call this the quarter pipe of a skater boy. This is now turning into the full half pipe, um, but not in a exceedingly aggressive uh, runaway market. You might say, well, Francis, that went up for quite some time. It also went down for quite some time. That was a fairly sizable uh, tooth in our watermelon smile. Uh, but this is more typical of what we generally expect movements such as this and you've had a spell now of some strength and this has been leaning on the crypto markets it's also been leading on the precious metal markets there's also been talk about china's stopping buying gold now or done what it needed to do for now you know as if uh, china would be declaring via bloomberg all its intentions sincerely about its acquisition of gold and its divestment from USD treasuries. Don't forget our Substack where we did the diagram illustrating that very, very fact, by the way, um, over here on our last Substack draw. Let's say goodbye to the watermelon smile. Um, in terms of this, you guys can subscribe to uh, the Substack, just drop a detail in. This is the chart we were referring to. We recently interviewed Tavi as well um, with regards to 
China's divestment from treasuries and the run up in gold. We spoke on that. Of course, the collapse in the treasury markets, how that avalanche is cascading and you've had a 45% correction there on the USDTs, the 30 year. And then we also spoke of what's it, the dis in the D, the loss of valuation in terms of dollars buying power generally, even though it's been one of the stronger currencies compared to other weakening currencies. And of course, that's a loss in valuation. So you are actually seeing a contraction in all of this. And I just wanted you guys uh, to bear uh, that, uh, that one in mind. So don't forget, you can go and jump in and follow us there. So what's happening uh, at the moment now, you might actually have a little bit of a pause in the dollar firmness narrative. They had weak uh, PPI uh, recently. So data follows trends. So we're starting to get weaker data. However, the dollar's been bid up on that because we've had a divergence. We are dealing with a divergence in interest rate policy. The, the Swiss out of the blue jumped and did a cut, which led to the euro gaining against the Swiss. And I think they did that in advance, knowing that the eurozone would probably have to cut themselves. It was one of the most flagged and obvious cuts that the ECB were uh, doing and they needed a bid under their debt market. So they communicated it because they need the market to show up and to take the money um, to do exactly that. Because of that very same fear of a trust moment on a nation like France, who is essentially, along with Germany, um, the fulcrum of the EU experiment. Uh, so there's a lot going on and dollars now Coming into this year, supposedly at one many banks saying seven cuts, now down to a single cut, possibly uh, as late as December. So this is going to see a little bit of a divergence and there could be a little bit of bidding up that needs to happen more on the dollar uh, inside that time to reflect the fact that you will be getting a higher yield on American debt. Uh, in an environment that European debt is actually delivering uh, cuts, which is going to weaken the currency. And I suspect cause potential problems for the bid that is required under European debt, such as French debt uh, and many other nation states that make up the all and the portfolios of issued debt uh, for the various different nations. So watch out uh, for that. If there's to be a debt crisis, I would see it. Uh, potentially being in the likes of the nations currently cutting, not Switzerland, but uh, the European uh, variety. Uh, and that warning of a trust event is going to be there. And I think a capitulation in debt markets would be uh, something that, at least at the partial level, people like Jay Powell wouldn't mind seeing a little bit of the froth being let out of the debt markets. In short, they need to devalue. They, they know they're probably going to be the buyer of last resort and they don't want to be the buyer up at these giddy levels. Um, they'd prefer to see it. So the interest rate spike as a result of the market not being happy with only receiving a certain yield and return on European debt remains. But anyway, let's not get too far in that weed. With the alternative of looking at the Dixie is the currency, the Euro USD. So um, in both senses, there is a breakout of some form, either to the downside for the Euro against the dollar or potentially to the upside. Again, like the oil, I'm not over advancing it. I would probably, in lieu of disinflation, expect the dollar to be the stronger one, which would likely see oil and the Euro break down. But that's not a prediction. Uh, in the events of disinflation, that means a debt crisis in the EU debt markets, uh, a further weakening uh, in the data regarding the strength of the economy, etc., etc. Oil and euro down, probably dollar up uh, in that environment, which would put a bid under US treasuries uh, and could indeed cause some problems for the European variety and or other FX emerging nations. That could be a possible scenario that one could put forward um, in terms of the currency markets, how they're looking on the macro going forward. So this descent was quite steep and brutal. There's some hard sells into that. Uh, and there's quite a lot of squeezing across the top here. So again, technically gun held to head on a 51%, 49% variety potentially the euro is going to be part of um, maybe some 
weakness uh, generally, and that could also be debt related. Um, good. So we were talk We started this discussion talking about oil. So where is the where is energies generally and um, natural gas? Something we got wrong. We were a bit early on. Um, over here and it's my fault actually on that one i can see it now and it's always so much easier to see we were we were bearish there and we nailed that head and shoulder to the downside which performed quite beautifully uh to the downside but we were too early on getting back bull and especially with this grinding recovery we started to call and we did a youtube and again it's still up there you can see how we were wrong uh, our wrongs and our rights we called the three level and we said well maybe we're getting a inverted head and shoulder here and we had a small uh, up that's actually the shoulder there we had a small up now the key thing as to why I believe I was wrong and a bit early and early is wrong by the way it's not uh, euphemism it's wrong especially when you've gone that much lower uh, the is that this was quite grinding behavior normally on reversals you want to see some real uppity uh, bias while the downside was quite hard this was a long grind up with a little reach and all of that so we were a little bit twitchy on the trigger finger there to get long but sometimes um, those errors are the right notion just at the wrong time still wrong but there may be an argument to be said also as we head into winter at the moment it's we're coming up to the middle of uh, summer. It's June uh, 18 in four days. It'll be the 22nd of June, literally the middle of summer for Europe. Uh, hardly going to be the peak demand for uh, heating and natural gas, uh, I would imagine. But uh, you may be hammering out a low here on natural gas. So before we get too mean towards the energies, uh, because I've already put forward one notion that potentially in a demand destroying event, we could find ourselves um, with a sell off in the oils. Um, you could also, uh, inside of all of this, end up getting your inverted head and shoulder a little bit later, but you might need to go up a little higher, maybe a little sell off this time. There's plenty of time for this all still to transpire by something like, you know, November uh, turn of the year type uh, event uh, for natural gas to turn. Um, oil, though, is the big inflation stick. Inflation currently trend wise heading down in most nation states economic activity i anticipate heading down so let's talk something else um, that points to that demand destroying event we call it the dde that could be the disinflationary move uh, and i'm going to bring the uk into this uh, one and i'm going to talk about the property market and one of the proper proxies for the property market um, is in fact um, estate agents. This was an online estate agent that became kind of uh, big and popular called Right Move. It's a bit like a Zoopla alternative for our American friends. And uh, this is one we are watching. And you can see, you know, how well it did. Okay, 2009 sure was a low water mark for uh, property uh, in terms of. <laughs> events that one can certainly say I'm leaving it I'm not logging normally I log on this scale and duration um, but I'm just leaving this in um, regular scaling for now just to give the, the sense of proportion so this has been a, a pretty good performer actually you know you what, what was your lows around here I mean a pretty good performer since 2009 I don't know what it listed for I think 2009 will probably be its all-time low but uh, you're at about 15 pound, uh, or is it 15 P? I think it might be 15 P. Uh, I think that's eight pound, 800 P up top there um, at its high and currently trading 554. So you're seeing uh, five pound 54 from a low of about 16 P where everyone thought, you know, the property market is largely dead. Um, broadening structure, building, broadening, um, getting more volatile, uh, as we got, of course, we had the highs up top here on top of the quantitative easing of 22. You had the collapse that was 2020. Um, we chose a 450 neckline there, uh, which both armpit one and armpit two have in fact met uh, over here. And you get a blow off head that's actually ran 
the technical eight pound mark, 800 P. And now we're seeing this structure in here. Now this structure could rally to the upside, but it could also be an inverted HVF. Uh, and we often get that in right shoulders. It hasn't made the high of the left shoulder. So that's your left shoulder, that's your right shoulder. And we're looking kind of as a proxy for property in the UK with high interest rates currently um, being the marker and a downturn plus the outlook for a Labour government who wants to spend on windmills and wind farms. My goodness, my goodness. I mean, I don't know where to start. This is the prosecutor that didn't want to prosecute rape gangs um, because it was uh, awkward um, immigration implications and race-based implications for doing so. That is a World Economic Forum member and that truly, truly is getting out of one bad WEF government into an even worse one. Almost certainly Labour to win, although most people not so excited about uh, Labour and as I say, a new party reform probably to scoop up a large amount of the conservative leaning voter base that will not vote uh, Tory again. Um, so it's going to be interesting times and it's uncertain times. And the, and the uh, reform versus Labour are not likely to be forming uh, coalitions. So this puts again the situation where the Liberal Democrats may in fact get to be kingmakers again as was experienced in the Cameron Nick Clegg era of some while back. Okay, um, this leads to a head and shoulder for which we've done a, uh, a potential downside target for, which could be a halvening plus plus. And don't forget the target of the head and shoulder could be a lot lower. So we could go into again a property problem. Debt markets become a problem. Banks don't lend. Banks don't lend. They want capital. In fact, they want repayments at accelerated rates. They want redemptions. They want overdrafts paid back. When they have capital squeeze, they don't lend anything at all. That's, uh, and I experienced 2007 and 8, and you know, I had a quarter of a million pound overdraft with one particular bank for doing various things. And we just got everything called in. Thankfully, we were a cash generative business and were able to pay it, but it was a shock, you know, to have the rug uh, pulled. Uh, like that during that time when we had quite a cash intensive property uh, business and uh, that was it you know that was Bank of Scotland and they've quickly got round up into the other banks so lending goes down or becomes very costly or big deposits are required the volume in the UK market of trade will go down terrible for right move uh, as, as an online agency. Um, even more terrible is if the lending goes down and you get unemployment, further unemployment. And I can tell you it's pretty miserable um, right now in terms of the, the, the economic environment for the UK from the people I'm talking to. Uh, and job losses and layoffs will come and that will lead to forced sales. This is when you get. It's the unemployment that tips that goes with uh, the crash in the property market because then you get four sellers. And four sellers need to get out and they have a bank on their back and they have to pay it off and they lose all their equity because they're selling at the wrong time and they were weak just at the key moment and everything they thought their property was once worth and they were sitting on big pounds of cash suddenly isn't worth. And you're seeing this already in the the, the high-end vehicle market for Britain um, with the whole notion of premiums on, you know, get a, a certain cars disappearing overnight uh, and now negative equity in higher purchase vehicles. So property is just uh, one step away. And this could be quite a, a, a devilish period for the United Kingdom, but also the world. I just don't think the UK is particularly well set. I do want to say this doesn't look like it's about a breakdown right now. Again, for everybody watching this, there is no trade call being made at this juncture. We are looking forward for your quarter three and your quarter four of this year and asking the question, on what basis are we running into the year of 2025? Um, this could in fact still go higher and go up and go around and this weakness can still be uh, a concern and then it could sell off and give us our second impulse. Then it could go up, 
da 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 you know plenty time and churn and continued tightening none of these aspects are ready baked live trades for me at this point this is us talking about observations and you could then have a breakdown you know a whole bunch later in the year so if you wail in and short here and says you know francis says uh, I'm afraid you're not understanding. We're having a what if discussion about the potential future of various market segments at a key moment. And the five pound mark does seem to be a kind of technical support where in each violation from down to the 450, you seem to be getting bought up. That's a violation down to around 460, you're getting bought up. So there's a sort of soft support there for now until new data arrives that is more damaging and a Labour Party in cahoots with the Liberal Democrats start building uh, windmills at unbelievable cost with unpredictable uh, non-economic uh, energy generation, uh, then you could really run into your debt problem on the your United Kingdom. We have also before on this channel warned, and I have to check uh, the UK... Uh, I think it was the 30 uh, year was it the 30 year or was it the 20 uh, debt market we called on the UK debt market so um, GB might have been GB 30 there you go we called on this and this is something we did make a call on some time ago uh, and said hold on now uh, there could be something brewing here um, on the debt and I think it might have been the 20 year uh, that we spoke of out of memory and you guys can go check the videos and correct me if I'm wrong um, but we did look at this fella and say could you have an interest rate spike right now actually I would say there is something coming and it's as likely to be a dip so this is also one of the coiling squeezing for major macro events trades and I would actually say I would bias against this um, right now being to the upside and I would be potentially in the current economic environment warning about disinflation um, and a need to do cuts but it could be very turbulent because I don't feel that many people are going to want to run in and buy every nation's debt because of a collapsing economy. In short, the debt cycle turned, guys, and it may not get the relief. You're not getting down to zeros again. You're not getting down to ones and twos again. You may want that. And the economy in terms of stimulus may need that. But the appetite for new buyers to come in on an ever thickening wedge of new issuance of debt plus all the existing debt being rolled over simply isn't there. So whilst you might have a breakdown and this might be uh, a spell of softening, uh, overall the long term is moving towards an interest rate spike. So again let's understand the time frames discussed here. It feels soft for me, the economy feels soft. Things could be happening that requires downside moves in the rate markets, which will be very bearish for the pound. So pound down and also bearish for uh, maybe the what's going on in the stock market. You'll first have a collapse be before the interest rates. In short, the central bank is last to move. You need the drama, you need the bad economy, you need the end of sales, you need low holidays being booked, you need a lot of things, you need a collapse in the pound, uh, and then the, the interest rates kind of start to happen then, and the pound will fall with the cuts. But you will not get down to the levels that you once had before. So no matter how bad the economy gets, this overall market has turned once and for all so let's just cover that here you can come and have a pullback yes but you will never get down to the level low that you got during uh, COVID and uh, you will not get down even part of the way but you can have a, a, a meaningful correction that said if we have a complete loss of um, belief in the debt markets and we start to have a debt market failure it's still possible it's still possible for this to break to the upside. Right now, I would be biasing to the weakness and the disinflationary angle, but it is still possible if you um, had, and that would be deeply undesirable to have interest rates climb 
on people right now who would be many of them in variable rates so also for our american friends the uk has variable uh, rates apart from a discount say two year or one year treat deal where you might get a fixed rate or you'll have a, a discount offer generally you run off a variable rate that means most homeowners unless they pay substantially more to get a fixed deal are actually immediately affected by their home payments when interest rates go up um, that also means they get reductions if they go down uh, immediately as well so they're far more sensitive to the movements it doesn't require the home being sold and new financing being taken out okay excellent so there's quite a lot of setups that are going to break out to the up or the downside in terms of energies dollar versus euro euro versus dollar dixie much and much of the same thing we've also looked at are the energy markets will they turn a little bit uh, so where does natural gas play a role in predicting the the p potential direction of the dollar don't forget you've got a far more cooperative russia and opec um and uh, i think brazil is knocking on that door and as part of that as well um and cuts were done so they want they want their 70 plus dollar oil price um and we've also got this uh, call that we made on the uk debt where we suspect in the end spikes we may get a correction first to the downside out of this before that happens um so an update on a lot of uh, markets there is a eerie feeling of events being played out for the quarter three quarter four period generally globally because we've looked at a number of markets we've spoken about europe we've spoken about britain and of course the uh, american markets the one thing we didn't do is well what went on in the stock markets and we haven't done that i don't want to make it too much it's slightly different but we can do a super quick because of we haven't covered the indices in a while we can have a look at what's going on in the SPY. The interesting thing about this right now is that stagflation suits equity markets. Since our head and shoulder call uh, target make, the stock market has been in a stagflationary market environment and has generally traded up. It has generally traded up and has traded well to the upside uh, and on the big time frames the weekly that's all that matters and it's not even super volatile valuations or many people will say are a little bit insane they'd be right uh, the trading up part of the market is part and parcel of delivering future earnings that will automatically adjust for inflation so you get an automatic inflation hedge out of earnings and dividend streams uh, out of equities of course if everybody gets so poor and those equities have a lot of consumer staples and retailers and people are buying less and travel agents so those are not very defensive industry for a crushed consumer you will get some PE compression and some ratings but overall at the moment the S&P is pretty firm looking given a sufficiently severe disinflationary event however I would expect that to change and a correction could happen but as I say, it's not exactly here just yet. And equity markets have a habit of climbing a wall of worry, despite people being in a state of dis disbelief in terms of them. And in fact, the equity market's been more solid and a bigger stalwart than even Bitcoin has been in the middle of its halvening bull market at the moment, which it's been gone sideways on since literally March. Uh, so the equity markets are absolutely very, very firm, despite everything and that is the flation part of the stagflation it's not yet a blow off um, that's the smp let's just get up the uh, nasdaq as well we'll get the nasdaq composite index up and it's not that different we can go monthly here that's possibly a bit big we all know that monthly it's a long term again that uh, head and shoulder to the downside performed that we called that was around the time other people were making a bull call we said careful there's a head and shoulder since that up 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 is it a melt up no is it a melt up i think that melt up comes with any stimulus and it might require a correction new highs on the nasdaq again steady steady up um crazy valuations it has to be said do you wail in at this point i would say no with the possibility of the economic disinflationary event 
be uh, getting closer and closer. You don't want to buy the top and wear a 30% uh, correction. Uh, however, you might buy the bottom of the next correction uh, and do rather well, much like a 2009 entry or a 2020 entry. Um, and uh, this is the surprising thing for people. The rich are getting richer. The rich own the bulk of the equity and it is an inflation hedge, much like what people expect out of gold. Okay, I hope this general market take has been interesting for you, specifically in terms of what's likely to transpire. My mind is thinking, what's the will the news be that gives us the trigger of the oil market going up or down, the dollar dominating to the upside, or maybe going down, could happen. Um, but slight bias to the disinflationary side. I think we have to get hit first before the proliferation uh, returns. But there are such circumstances such as war, uh, escalation, whether in the Middle East or in um, Russia, Ukraine, that uh, could spike the oil price straight uh, up uh, without any sell off. OK, don't forget, guys, to be part of our community trading individual equities, cryptos, commodities for building wealth in reset times. Click that first link below. Thank you for supporting us and we'll catch you next time. Bye.